My name is Margaret Jackson and I'm a senior at the University of Arkansas. I have a major in supply chain management and a minor in marketing. I'm taking this course to gain a better understanding of art and the history of art. I'm originally from Kansas City, which is part of the reason why I chose to do this piece. I've chosen to do my project on the Nelson Atkins Sculpture Garden, more specifically the Shuttlecocks. This garden is located at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City, Missouri. For those of you who have not been to this museum, I strongly recommend it. It has a beautiful garden around it along with amazing displays inside. The piece in the garden I will be spending the most time talking about are the Shuttlecocks by Klaus Odenberg and Chus van Bruggen. When I think of the Nelson Arkins Museum, I immediately think of these sculptures first. The museum is known for them. There are four different sculptures in different positions and locations around the garden. This is a photograph of Klaus Odenberg. And this is a picture of Van Bruggen. Something I find specifically interesting about the sculptures is that when they were built, an agreement was made with the artist that they would be repainted every two years so that they would continue to look good over time. There was then concern though that over time, um, there would be excess paint buildup that would actually make the sculptures look worse. So in 2002, they came across a new system. They came up with this new method of painting that consisted of a primer, an intermediate layer, and a top coat that would last 15 years before being needed to repaint again. Before they repainted it in this method though, they were disassembled and cleaned so that they could make their best after painting. According to a statement by the artist that, um, that I found, they were originally asked to build a large scale sculpture for the large lawn in 1991. So at the time they traveled to Kansas City to visit the grounds. While they were on the trip, Kush saw a painting by Frederick Remington that had Native Americans wearing headdresses. He was attracted to them and that is what sparked the original idea of feathers. They were originally going to have large feathers dropped on the lawn as if they were dropped by overpassing birds. They then saw an aerial picture of the museum and said it looked like a tennis court, and that's how the shuttlecock idea came to be. This is when they found their individual influence of the art. They were representational, which means that the art represents an object in this case. The composition of the piece of art is made of aluminum, fiberglass, reinforced plastic, and then paint. The paint is an orange hue on the ball of the shuttlecocks while the wings are white. They were built in 1994. They are just over 19 feet tall with a diameter of about 16 feet. The reason that they are all different positions and use different planes to represent how they can fly, turn, flip, etc. over the museum. The artists use a unique use of space and shape to show these things. The methodology that I would use to explain these pieces of art would be psychoanalysis. Klaus Odenberg was well known for using imagery and paradox in his art by creating large-scale objects. For example, his piece called Saw Sawing in Tokyo that looks like a giant saw going into the ground. I think it's because it says a lot about art and how expressive it can be and tells you a lot about the artists who create it, and I think that's very relative in this case. It's a modern and unique concept in 1994 when it was built. I would classify this artwork as part of the pop movement. Klaus Odenberg was well known for this movement for making large sculptures of regular objects ranging from clothing to furniture. It says in the book that although his objects can be considered a pop artist in the sense that the subject matter is derived from everyday objects in the media, his work is distinctive because it has maintains a sense of textural regularity in his materials. He makes an effort to make his art look like the smaller actual objects that he was modeling from. An example of this is from the in the book of a piece of his called Clothespin, which is modeled and looks just like a real clothespin. The piece is said to be a visual pun, which he is well known for, using metaphors and paradox in his artwork. I chose this piece because I think that it's iconic in some ways. I always saw them when I went to the museum and never really thought much of them. I also like the fact that it was modern and contemporary art because this is a style of art that I am most interested in. I also personally think that these pieces have a lot of intrinsic value. I hope that throughout my presentation you got to learn more about the shuttlecocks from the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. I hope that one day you have a chance to go visit this piece of art. They really are cool to see in person. Thank you.